What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bianca. I make fitness, lifestyle, wellness type of content here on Instagram and on TikTok. If you're not new, welcome back and thank you so much for clicking on another video. This week's video is a highly requested one. It is one that you guys love, it is one that I love to make, and it is a full week of workouts. I was particularly excited to film this one because the workout split that I have right now, I absolutely love. So the goal of my workout split at the moment is to get leaner. So I want to lower my body fat percentage, but I still wanna make sure that I maintain all the muscle mass that I've worked hard to build. Because as you may or may not know, when you do go into a caloric deficit and you are losing fat, if it is not done properly, it's also very possible to also lose some of the muscle mass that you have built. And we do not want that. We wanna keep all that muscle. We worked hard, we worked long for it, we wanna keep it. So as you will see, in order to achieve that, the goal of this workout split is yes to have workouts that have high caloric expenditure in order to allow myself to be in a deficit a bit more easily but it also puts a lot of emphasis on still maintaining a good amount of volume for all the different muscle groups this type of split is what has worked the best for me over the last two years it has allowed me to continue to put on muscle mass while also lowering my body fat percentage so it has drastically changed my body my strength and i hope that you guys get inspired to try something similar as well so without further ado, we're gonna get into it day by day. I'm gonna do some voiceovers and just bring you guys along the entire week. But as always, before we get into it, don't forget to like if you enjoyed this kind of video and subscribe so you never miss a video in the future. Okay, now we're actually getting into it. Okay, day one is a leg day and I like to leave Monday as a leg day because most of the time I take Sunday off. So that means that having that extra like 24 hour and plus of rest allows me to feel really strong and refreshed by the time I go into my leg day, which is often my most demanding, most challenging workout of the week. So that's why I love to put it on Monday. Before I start any leg day, I make sure to have a really good warm up. So first thing that you see me doing here is some rowing to increase blood flow to my muscles, increase my heart rate. Then I go into some more specific hip, knee, and just overall body mobility. It is completely personal preference which ones you do as long as you feel warmed up and ready to go. And then always, before you do any type of heavy lift, make sure that you work your way up. So I did multiple sets of squats with lower weights before I got to my actual working sets. Once I was done with the squats, we moved on to reverse lunges. This is a fantastic exercise for your glutes, for your quads, and it really makes sure to work out any imbalances because you really are focusing on one side at a time. Next, we have b sense Romanian deadlifts, and I superset this with hip thrust. This was killer for the glutes. I was shaking by the end of the superset. And then we finish off with even more accessory work, so some side plank clams with some knee extensions in the quadruped position. So as you saw, this leg day was really, really focused on hypertrophy. So here I made sure that I tackled all of the important muscle groups for me, so quads, glutes, hamstring, there's a little bit of calf work that I did at the end that I forgot to film, but I'm tackling all the major muscle groups that I wanna work on, and I'm giving them a good amount of volume. So I did four sets for every single one of those exercises. So like I said, this workout, very hypertrophy focused, making sure my muscles get a good amount of stimulus. Then moving on to day two, it's a very similar type of workout, but this time it is upper body only to give my legs at least that 24 hours to recover, rebuild, recuperate before we work them again. So let's get into day two. For day two, which is upper body, same concept with the warm up. I started by moving my shoulders around, made sure that I got the muscles that I wanted to get activated going, and then after that, I did a little bit more mobility just to feel like my entire torso was active, ready to go. Once again, it's personal preference. Wherever you feel a little stiffer is where I would recommend that you work on. And then once you feel good to go, you can get into the workout. Pull-ups is always the first exercise that I do on upper body day because it is the most demanding by far and it is also an exercise that I'm trying really hard to get better at. I think there's nothing cooler. Then because pull-ups were a pulling exercise, I moved on to a pushing exercise so that my back and biceps had some time to rest. So I did strict overhead press and then I superset of that as you can see with some push press 
to be able to really get max volume before my muscles were fully burnt out. And after that we went back into a pulling exercise which is here the barbell bent over row, fantastic for working the lats, the mid back and it is amazing if you want to build that hourglass physique. Then another pushing exercise, push ups. So as you can see, this is how I usually tend to work for my upper bodies. I'll start my compounds by alternating a push, a pull. And then once we get into more isolation work, like here, I did chest supported wise. This year I did superset with another more back focused exercise, which is the TRX face pulls that you will see in a second. And then I finished off with a tricep burnout. So this overhead tricep extension is one of my favorite tricep exercises and I did as many reps as I could, so until failure, and then I took about 45 second rest and then I did that four times, like I said, for a really good burnout. So after we have worked the lower body and the upper body more hypertrophy style, day three is more of a pure conditioning day. So here we're focused a lot more on cardiovascular endurance and on just keeping the heart rate high while still working muscle. So as you can see, I'm still using weights, I'm still doing a good amount of compound lifts, but instead of focusing on heavier weights, the weights are a little bit lighter, higher rep ranges, less rest so that the workout only lasts 30 to 45 minutes, but I'm very fatigued, I burn a lot of calories, and this really adds to my week in terms of caloric expenditure. My conditioning days vary from week to week. This is where I just have fun with whatever I feel like doing that week. So here I decided that I wanted to do some rowing, so I was doing 750 meters of rowing as fast as I could. Then I moved on into this RDL to squat complex, which is Fantastic for keeping the heart rate high while still working muscles that I care about a lot, which are glutes and quads. Afterwards, exercise number two was a push-up to shoulder tap, so we're getting those upper body pushing muscles involved and some core as well. Then, the fourth part of the circuit is some kettlebell swings. Fantastic for the posterior chain and it also keeps the heart rate up. And the final exercise was this plank side to side dips for more of a core focus. And then basically what I do for these workouts is I just repeat the circuit over and over trying to rest as little as possible. Sometimes I'll give myself a set amount of sets like I'll say four, five, six rounds or for workouts like this what I actually did is I just put on a 30 minute timer and just kept going and tried to do as many rounds as possible. All right, so day four sometimes is a rest day, depending on how I feel that week, if I'm fatigued, if I'm still sore from one of the workouts, then sometimes I'll rest. So this week I took my rest on day four. Day five is where the full body workouts begin. So day five and six are both full body workouts. Day five is more push focused, so I'm focusing on quads, I'm focusing on the shoulders, so just the overall anterior muscles of the body. And then day six is full body, but the more posterior muscle. So more focus on hamstrings, on glutes, on back. And that way, like I said at the beginning of the video, I get a very well-rounded amount of volume in all the workouts. And with day five and six being full body, because I'm working multiple muscle groups and I'm often supersetting, tri-setting even, I'm moving almost nonstop, my heart rate stays high, my caloric expenditure stays high, so that leaves me with a lot of calories burned at the end of the week, which is important when you are trying to lose body fat. So let's get into these last two workouts. Full body push almost always starts with squats for me because I want to make sure that I get barbell back squats in twice a week. So I get it once on my leg day and then once here. Sometimes like this workout, I'll do a variation instead. So here you can see I'm doing one and a half squats. So the weight is a little bit lighter and I'm adding more tension, more time under tension for my glutes and my quads. Then second exercise, another leg one that is focused on pushing muscles. So this version of split squats is killer for the quads. The burn was amazing. And then I cheated a little bit and added a glute exercise, even though this isn't supposed to be a very glute focused workout, but we're trying to grow those glutes. 
so I try to do hip thrust two to three times a week. This was the last leg exercise for this workout. The second part of the workout is more upper body focus and like I said, pushing muscles, so definitely a lot of shoulders involved. I'm also trying to grow those shoulders into big, juicy boulders, so this is a fantastic exercise. Then I added some unilateral landmine presses, which also feel amazing, and they're also great if you have a little bit of shoulder discomfort. This position is very good to be able to continue to train your delts without that pinching pain in the front, so definitely consider that. And I superset those unilateral presses with landmine rotations, which are a fantastic core exercise, but they also definitely burn the shoulders, especially if they are placed with a superset where I was already working the shoulders. So this was a really great addition to this workout. And I finished this full body day with some core exercises. I don't do core very, very often, but once or twice a week, I try to add a superset or a triset at the end of my workouts. But I do want to say that I do get a lot of core work by doing a lot of compound lifts on every single workout. Okay, there ended up being a last minute change of plans. Instead of a full body pull day, it ended up being just a glutes and hamstrings day because my upper body was still really, really tired for some reason. So we changed it up instead. My warm up once again is very specific to the joints that I feel like I need to get looser that day and also to what movement patterns I'm going to be doing. So I knew that I was going to be doing some lunging, I knew that I was going to be doing a lot of hinging since it's a posterior chain day. So that is the movements that I focused on for today's warm up. It cannot be a glute and hamstring day without Romanian deadlifts. This is one of my favorite exercises. And for this workout, I wanted to try a spicy variation. So as you can see, I'm doing one and a half Romanian deadlifts. So I'm adding a little pulse after every single rep, which adds so much time under tension to the glutes and the hamstrings. And it was a killer. And then after that, I moved on into a superset, which was just some body weight squat pulses, as you can see here. So I did about 25, if I remember correctly, and it was an amazing superset. Then I moved on to my love-hate relationship exercise, which is Bulgarian split squats. And I decided to torture myself a little bit extra by adding a drop set in there, which means that after I did the amount of reps that I intended to do with the weight that I chose, I dropped the weight and then went right away into as many body weight Bulgarian split squats as possible. And let me tell you, this is probably the most difficult superset out there. Then moved on into some hip thrusts. Even though I had done hip thrusts the day before, normally I don't do them back to back, but my lower body wasn't feeling sore, so I decided to go for it and it felt fantastic. So listen to your body and as you see, sometimes you have to make changes even though your split was already all set up. Then my two last isolation exercises were hamstring Swiss ball curls. This is probably the best exercise for the hamstrings out there. Also works your glutes and your core and low back. Everything has to stay super stable. And super set it with my favorite glute mead exercise, which is these side plank clams. They burn so, so good. All right guys, so that is my week of workouts. That is my current split. It will stay my current split for probably at least the next two months because I'm really enjoying it. I'm seeing progress and I, I am still able to add some variety here and there by changing some isolation exercises, by changing my conditioning. So I'm really not going to get bored, I know that. So. That's what it's looking like. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want more information, more of these as I change it up a little bit over the next few weeks, leave comments down below. I love hearing back from you guys. And like I mentioned, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.